So I, I want to speak about something uh, for the first time. I have never spoken about this subject before. What, uh, what I want to say tonight is um, I want to speak about the importance of the function of human imagination and the role it plays in human health. Um, it is important for you that you are dealing with uh, health, the health of the people, to understand that the function, the faculty, the possibility of the human brain to imagine, to fantasize, is one of the most high functions of the human brain. Imagining, fantasizing, is also, as I hope I will show you, is also important for rejuvenating the human body. Without imagination, if the faculty of imagination reduces to the extent uh, that a human being cannot, does not, loses the possibility to imagine, from that moment onwards, start a process of degeneration of the human organism. Uh, I want to give you some examples. For instance, in uh, depression, uh, a stage of depression is what people call indifference. I am not interested about anything. And you know that when you hear that said by a patient, you are going to have a very difficult case. Uh, if uh, you examine such an individual, whether anything excites them, they will say nothing. But in order an individual to be excited about something, he has to have the faculty of imagining, the possibility of imagination. Where is uh, life in its fullest sense? there is always an area of the brain which is easily excitable and produces pictures, ideas, and uh, 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 plans for the future. It's interesting that uh, you remember the other day I said that each area of the brain can be excited 
in a positive or a negative way, right? Every area has both possibilities. The same with imagination. The area of the brain which is excited easily and produces the phenomenon of imagining can be positive or negative. So therefore, imagination is a faculty that can can bring a, a human being in its highest possible spiritual state. It's through imagination, through this faculty, that a human being is entering the world of ideas, which is the highest area where we can enter as humans it's through imagination. Also, that a human being can go totally astray, away from uh, the positive ideas, goes to the other side, and then we have uh, the problems that we call, we call mental problems. But I want to draw your attention, first of all, to a fact which you all know, especially those who are working with mental patients, that mental patients, you know, usually you will see they have delusions, right? Acoustic or visual delusions. That means they are living in a world of imagination. They are living in a not a real, what we call not a real world, right? By entering in this state, what happens? is that the energy that is experienced by the human who is entering in this world is unbelievable, unbelievable energy. I'll give you an example. I have seen, and you, you may have similar experiences. Manic, depressive people, when they are entering the phase of the mania, of the manic phase, their energy is increased unbelievably. I have seen cases in a manic state for days and days to go without sleep, without eating, and yet the energy which they produce is unbelievable. They can go on day after day, night after night, with one hour of sleep, or even less sometimes, with very little food, no appetite, but you see them moving around, talking, doing things, uh, uh, leaving the house, going out, uh, asking uh, people to have sex with them, etc. Now, we have to ask, where 
this energy is coming, eh? why? What is the mechanism? When an individual lives in the world of fantasy, have such a big, huge energy, while at the same time, the one who says, in a depressive state, I am totally indifferent. What you will see in such cases? Lack of energy, invariably. Lack, total lack of energy. When the person says phosphoric acid state, uh, uh, picric acid state, stanum states, when these people, carbovegetabilis state, when these people they say, I'm exhausted and I don't care about anything, at the same time you see the tiredness, extreme tiredness in their organism. They may be going to bed and though they are tired, they can sleep, hardly can sleep a few hours and they become more tired, and sleepless and they never have enough sleep to recover. And this is what they feel. If I could sleep, I would recover my energy. Now, I want you now to keep this in mind. Okay. And I will go to another state when you were children. And you know how children they use their imagination in everything they are doing, right? Children live and do things through their imagination. And what do we observe with children? We observe a lot of energy. They go up and down, they play, uh, they devise uh, plays, uh, they they imagine things, huh? and a lot of energy is flowing. Uh. Also, I'm sure from your experience, everyone will remember that in your young years, more and more, and uh, in the childhood, but especially later on, if you had problems to fall asleep, you would uh, have to imagine something pleasant and with this kind of imagination, the organism will be settled down and calmed down and eventually enter the, the state of sleep. And then you will have to ask why do we have to fall asleep in order to keep on living? They say, according to statistics, seven days without any sleep, if they wake up a person forced with, by force, if they wake him up for seven days, the eighth day will die. If they don't allow him to sleep, for one minute, for seven days, he dies. Therefore, the entering of that state 
is absolutely necessary for our existence. Right? And now we have to understand what is the connection between imagining, imagination, fantasizing and sleep. Is fantasizing, imagining a, a kind of a dream, dream state? You see, in, uh, in, in, in medicine, we have a, an expression which says daydreaming, daydreaming. Person is daydreaming. Okay. So therefore, we have to connect this daydreaming, this imagination, the possibility we have to imagine things with the very existence of life. But, at the same time, we say, this person is out of his mind. He's totally crazy. Okay. And also, you see this, we say this in cases of manic depression, right? A manic state, you see and you get frightened. People are in a kind of ecstasy and imagination is f in its fullest uh, function, the imagination, right? And a lot of energy is coming in. They have been left. Something happens, a mechanism in the brain that clicks and allows what we call the lo our logic ability to go to sleep and the organism is left without its ability to logically uh, do things. In, in a dream, when you enter the state in a dream, a dream state, you know that logic does not work anymore. You say, I want to leave, I want to go away, but you cannot go away. Somebody is behind you, is uh, <laughs> trying to get you, and you try to run, and you cannot run, and all these things. So you are left. You are left to what? Have you ever examined this? You are giving up your ego to something, to another state of being without control anymore. You don't have the control. So the moment that you lose the control, the ego, the energy is flowing. Whoop. What happened? Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay, I have said something wrong. Well, I'm really I'm really uh, examining things maybe that are uh, a little bit beyond, on the beyond. But I examine in a such analytical way that maybe we can be reaching conclusions about human health and find parameters to evaluate who is really healthy and who is really sick, right? 
which is something very useful for us when we treat patients. Many times I have received questions with, uh, from students saying, tell us what is a natural symptom and what is a pathological symptom. Uh, is this way where it starts pathology, right? I have been asked many times, right? And uh, I try every time to give uh, an answer. But uh, unless we go into really the depth of the issues to understand really what is happening, we will always know half truths. We will know, yes. But, I mean, didn't ever cross your mind the question, how the hell, why do I have to sleep? When I was young, I thought, if I sleep, you see, I was full of this, what you call imagination. Eh? Unfortunately, I don't have it now, but anyhow. I was full of this, uh, uh, how can I, imagining and, and life, eh? the life, different things which happen in the, in the mind of a child, right? Uh, who is very happy, tomorrow I'll do this, I'll meet that girl, etc. And I, I, oh, she's beautiful, I like her, etc. You know, and uh, maybe I should do this, that, etc. And when it was time that I had to sleep, I said, oh my God, now I'm going to lose eight hours, seven hours, where I will be non-existent and I closed my eyes when I woke up it was seven o'clock in the morning sometimes my aunt was coming get up you have to go to work <laughs> you know <laughs> okay this function now I want to connect the, the possibility of the imagination triggering, triggering a state which is between sleep and awareness. If you trigger that state, then imagination, imagining things comes. Because usually children go to sleep while they are imagining different things. They are imagining. And as they are imagining, eh, ooh, they enter the sleep. And then the dreams come. The dreams, what are the dreams? Etc. Another question. Jung, Jung says is the collective uh, uh, consciousness, the collective subconsciousness. And, uh, and uh, different people have tried to explain what is this plane of dream and what is the connection between dreams and our lives. Right? And the symbol, symbolic, symbolic uh, ways of, uh, of dreams and how you explain them. But what is interesting for us as healers to know is that imagination can be triggered and it's a good thing. How imagination can be triggered? In children, you don't need much 
a child can find very easy ways to trigger his imagination. As logic becomes prominent in our life, imagination is reduced. Is more reduced and more reduced and more reduced. And maybe will be totally reduced imagination. And that's a very bad state of affairs. Because no more flow of energy. The moment that you enter imagining states which are pleasant, you have flow of energy. The moment that you enter states where no imagination, the flow of energy stops. Now the question is, if this is so, in fan fantasizing or the imagining is the highest, highest form of, of, uh, of states in which the human being can enter, right? You can enter the highest states, the highest states through imagination. What, a, what a, are the, the uh, people who go away from society and go to monasteries usually, or even worse, by themselves, right? And they live for years, and they do, they do praying, uh, do uh, spiritual uh, exercises, etc. What is the purpose? The purpose is to, to refine the imagination and to stop the logic, the logical mind. To make the logical mind calm down and let the imagining, the imagination, take hold of the individual. And this is the experience that these people in the monasteries they have because it comes an experience which is explosive something beyond belief, the energy that comes, flows in, is unbelievable. And the fulfillment of the individual, the, 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 the sense of fulfillment is so great, so deep, that they don't need anything else. They don't need to communicate, they don't need to speak out about their experience. You see, they are absolutely content with that divine state, how it came, through, through efforts, constant efforts, to excite the imagination, to excite the imagination and to imagine, to imagine, or to, um, they call it a, an enlightenment to attain enlightenment and to attain a unification with God. A unification with God. And then suddenly the flow. If you read the experiences of these people, you will see are identical. Whether it's, uh, it's a person, a yogi or a, or a Sufi or a... Um, uh, or, a, or a Christian, uh, or a, the, the experience is the same. They have entered a state of absolute bliss. Okay. Who can do that? Here is the question. Here is the question. Be careful, because a lot of people are trying, you know the, the Beatles, do you know the Beatles? 
The Beatles were some people who were uh, singing. <laughs> you know the Beatles, okay. Beatles were singers who, f who due to the, to the love they received from their audience, they were entering from moment to moment, they were entering such states in the stage while, while they were performing. And everybody was getting the energy from uh, such states. And they were the first one to realize, oh, this state is similar with the yogis. So let's go to, the, to India to meet the yogis. They were the first popular uh, people who left their countries to go to, to meet the yogis. What happened? Of course. They went to India, they met the yogis, but they met most probably the wrong yogis, <laughs> the wrong, <laughs> the wrong uh, uh, guidance, and uh, most probably they ended up uh, taking some drugs, marijuana, etc., etc., and trying to bring about a state, a that state, through artificial means. Now, if you try to do this, to stimulate this area, this area through chemical drugs, okay, what happens is the area, all the areas are of double, of double um, quality, positive, negative. You stimulate the area, and what happens? The experience, instead of being a fantastic experience, is an experience of going to hell. You see, I met a lot of people when I was in America with, with marijuana. They came to tell me their experience, and they were sick after that, with tremendous fear of going crazy. So you have to be careful how you use and how we, not you, how we use all these chemicals because we cannot stimulate areas of the brain in an unnatural way because we are going to pay the price later on for sure. The more you stimulate the brain, and even if you get good experiences, the more you will have the after effects. So, what is the imagination? What is a healthy imagination? This is what we should concern about a healthy imagination. And who can have and to what extent our brains can tolerate what a, where are the limits we can tolerate going into this area of imagining. Because many people they've tried and they went in the wrong way. Then we have the mental problems that we see today. So a person, let us say, a person of our civilization, Western civilization, who is today really thinking or uh, making the effort to become a better human being, usually comes in contact 
with such movements, right? Spiritual movements, etc., in which some directions are given what you have to do in order to attain eternal bliss, enlightenment, etc. And what I have found out is that unless the whole organism is in a state of health as a whole, if he pushes himself hard to attain states which are, more, are not permissible because of his limitations of health, he will go astray and will develop mental symptomatology. So the imagination is our, our door to whatever is the highest in our understanding. But we have to have a healthy organism to try to open that door. That is why homeopathy, which is bringing back a kind of a balance in the organism, is so important at this moment for a society which has gone astray totally to come back to its normal, natural roots. You see, if your brain has a problem in the area, when you stimulate it, will open up the problematic area. Will not open the correct area. Will not open up the positive uh, side of the imagination will open the negative side of imagination. And then, then you, you, you are wondering what has happened. Huh? What has happened? And in this world in which we live today, the pornography, because it's uh, on, the, on the news, eh? every day they catch people with pornographic stuff, with I mean, disgusting uh, uh, functions. Eh? with children, with babies, with... I mean, can you imagine now how these people are driven to such unbelievable actions because their imagination took the wrong turn? What happened in our civilization? In, such terrible state because we lost the possibility to be children. So you hear Thomas, he said, it's, it's, it's unbelievable what he said, it was unbelievable. He says, I pray for the humanity, for those I love, I pray. He was very honest. Because in the child's soul, there is this element of uh, purity, purity. Huh? That's not yet. We consider this child as non-normal uh, yet, yet some fac functions which is experiencing in, from his brain 
are very, very healthy and are healthier than ours as grown-ups. Because he said, I want to throw a bomb for the injustice. Huh? Okay, the way he means it is all right. He prays at the same time for the good of society. Fantastic. Through his fantasy, all this is going through his fantasy. When uh, we'll try to make him a normal human being, eh? what we'll do? Best in the class, <laughs> you know. And you have to study your blah, blah, blah. And you have to do this and you have to do that. The imagination will start be reducing, reducing, reducing. But now, I'll tell you something. I will ask you something. What, what, can, what can trigger your imagination? What can trigger? Can anybody tell me? When the imagination is triggered mostly, the most powerful triggering of imagination is a general population. In? In? In love. In love, but not love. In, in eros, in eros, in love, in you, you meet a person and you imagine qualities about that person which he may never have, but you, through your imagination, you, you, you imagine it and you feel that, he, my God, I, I met the perfect man. Later on you will find out he was a scam, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> By the time you fell in love, it was like a freedom. You go to bed to sleep and you imagine uh, embracing him and chat with her, etc. And you go very happily in enter the state of, you know the power? Now if, <laughs> I'll tell you something. Maybe, maybe I should not tell, but anyhow, it doesn't matter. I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, well, <coughs> I fell in love for the first time when I was 11, 11 years old, one year before my mother had died. Uh, my father was dead and uh, was a girl opposite uh, uh, you, you know, the street opposite. She was, I was dying to see her passing, you know, etc. To the extent, <laughs> to the extent, I loved my mother very much. So before falling in love, my mother had fallen ill. And I was holding, holding her hand and I was, says, can I bring you some water, you know? And I was petting her to, to, to make her good, to make her. When I was in love, my mother fell ill. And I did not notice that I did not pay attention anymore to my mother being ill because I was busy looking through the window when the girl was passing. And my mother, who noticed all that, she said, there was a time when you were. <laughs> now, not anymore. <laughs> you know, it was very interesting. For me, I could not understand, but I was living, I was living in a state of, uh, of ecstasy, you know. That. Okay. That was not the last time I fell in love, okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> later on, okay, I, I had some experiences. I, I also had some experiences. But what I want to tell you, I want to tell you this, I want to tell you. 
I want to tell you this. this. Uh, when, when I asked my friend while I was uh, 26, uh, no, 27, 27 year old, I was when I came in contact with homeopathy. I asked my friend to tell me what was this black book like the Bible, you know, this book. Your head in your blah, 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 and I would like, and where can I buy? And I bought this book, Berica Materia Medica. I went and bought it. I was in South Africa by that time. I felt, I felt the same way I was feeling as a child when I was in love. Such excitement, such, I, I couldn't believe it. You know, feelings were coming. Uh, and I was reading, reading the book. I read the book, this book. I read it, I, if I remember well, in three days. Three days, I went from A to Z. All the remedies. <laughs> in a state of excitement, etc., etc. So, now, I don't have any more this excitement, you see, because you know how much I have been uh, criticized, uh, harassed, uh, oh God, I mean, I, I don't have to tell you. I don't, I don't have, but this original ecstasy that went through the love of what I understood to be the right system of medicine keeps me until today. And I had a very important person coming to meet me to be treated. Okay. I treat important people of Greece for, for reasons that you understand, eh? political influence. So he says, Mr. Vithulkas, I am amazed. How old are you? I said, I'm 76. I'm amazed that you have such a passion for what you're doing. I don't feel the passion anymore as I used to. But still, that love carries me through. And uh, I will tell you that uh, the imagination, the correct imagination, is the, two, the, is the road to heaven. The wrong imagination is the road to hell. The stimulation of uh, your best feelings and uh, the advice that you will have to give to your patients should be continued. Somebody will come and tell you, I am in love. You will say, perfect. You have to be careful a little bit, because when, when you are in love, if you have a healthy brain, see what is going to happen. You will fall in love with the right person. If your health is not good, you will fall in love with the wrong person. A person who is quite healthy will be completed by finding his dipole. You know dipole, the word? The person who is not healthy, he will fall in love with the wrong person and is going to go through 
a lot of painful experiences. Again, that is why it's important to create a healthy society. But to know when we take somebody from unhealthy state, leading them to healthy states. These things are not taught in the medical schools, unfortunately. Should have primary importance in the medical schools, all these questions and all these uh, ideas. Because now the doctor comes and says, what do you have? Uh, uh, pneumonia. Okay, I'll give you antibiotics, don't worry, I will fix you. He fixes the pneumonia, but at the same time leaves you without imagination. You will look for imagination and will not be there anymore after the pneumonia. You will look for fever and the fever will not manifest. The fever does not appear if the organism is subdued with chronic degenerative condition. And all this Facts, because these are facts, are not taught. So I hope we understood how important imagination is and how dangerous as well. When a person can push himself, can push himself into attaining a spiritual state, you see, out of the monks, one out of 10,000 reaches the stage that we call spiritual, high spiritual stage. And they become the saints of the century, etc., etc. Why? The others, they have their limitations. And to accept the limitation also, it's a very big issue that we shall be discussing perhaps another time.